Let me tell you what my experience in life has been. I've discovered that in 100% of the cases, no exceptions, people who won't take step number one never take step number two. You see, she had come to me with an impossible dream. Her dream was that nice Mr. Ziegler was going to solve all of her problems and she would live happily ever after. But folks, I got news for you. I can't solve her problems. I can't solve your problems. But I will give you some steps that I'll absolutely, definitely, and positively will work for you. As it worked eventually for her. I said, well, ma'am, let me tell you something. Unless you're willing to take step number one right now, it's been nice talking with you. She angrily opened her notebook. Before we got through, there were 22 things she liked about her job. Not only did they pay her for working there, they paid her above average. She had three weeks vacation with pay. She had a retirement program. She was in on profit sharing. She had health insurance, life insurance, and accident insurance. She lived less than 10 minutes from home. She was in on management decisions. The company sent her to three seminars a year to be paid for. She had her own private office and parking place. 22 things that she liked about her job. Now I said, ma'am, when you get home tonight, everything is finished. Get off in a room right by yourself. Close the doors. Change one word from I like my job to I love my job. Get in front of that mirror. And folks, I cannot say this strongly enough, but I'm going to try. The eyes are the windows of the soul. Look yourself in the eye and with excitement and enthusiasm say, I love my job because they pay me for working there. I love my job because they pay me above average for working there. I love my job because I have a wonderful insurance program. I love my job before every one of the statements. You will sleep better that night. You see, there's something hidden in what I'm saying to you now. When she says, I like my job, she's really saying, I'm grateful for my job. And of all of the emotions we can have, according to Hans Selye, the number one stress specialist in America, the healthiest of all human emotions is gratitude. I said, you go down that list. I like my job. I love my job, rather. That is a way of gratitude. You'll sleep better the first night. Tomorrow morning, when you get up, get back in front of the mirror just before you go to work, Get back in front of the mirror and repeat the process again with excitement and enthusiasm. I love my job because, and take the list with you. Because the reality is, you see, you will have started to change from a fault finder to a good finder. Some people do really find fault like there's a reward for it. They really do. <laughs> take the list with you and you will be able to add to that list absolutely guaranteed. Do this every morning and every night and you will have an astonishing recovery from this advanced case of stinking thinking. Now, I didn't say that to her, but I'm saying it to you. That's what it was. It was an advanced case of stinking thinking. Well, six weeks later, I was back in Birmingham, Alabama. I was doing a follow-up sales seminar. Now, the lady was not in sales, but she'd been listening to my tapes. She'd been listening to Automobile University, and she had discovered that everybody sells. Everybody who will ever hear this is in selling. Whether you're a school teacher, a civil service worker, a military personnel, an executive secretary, it doesn't make any difference what you do, you sell every day of your life. There she was on the, at the sales seminar, seated on the front row, grinning so wide she could have eaten a banana sideways. I'm telling you, you're talking about somebody that was excited. She was turned on. I said, well, how you doing? She grinned even more broadly and said, Mr. Ziegler, I'm doing wonderfully well and uh, thank you for asking. She said, you cannot believe how much those people down there have changed. I got a lid on the line, folks. You're not gonna change anybody else till you change you. Everything really does begin with you. Now you see the unfortunate thing, this lady had been raised in a very negative environment. First her parents had told her that she'd never amount to anything. They said, you know, you're always late, you're always sloppy. Why can't you be like your brother or your sister or whatever? When she got married, her husband had continued it. And so her self-talk had become completely negative. 
Everything that she said about herself was negative. I, you know, like Dad said, I'll never amount to anything. Or like my husband says, I can't do anything right. But when she started changing the input, then some radical changes took place.